Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again and this time we're painting my washing. <laughs> yep, I had a busy day and I got back and I was like, right, I'm going to do a painting and I'm going to do it outside because it was quite nice, quite warm. And I thought, I'm just going to go for it. So I got my French easel outside. And, uh, and this is me sketching away, <laughs> sketching away the uh, clothes. So I'm battling with a fly at the moment. <laughs> and you find that funny when you get one fly in the house and you just can't get it. It keeps landing on me. It's really annoying. <laughs> Anyway, so t-shirts, the basic shape of a t-shirt is really a rectangle, isn't it? It's a rectangle with a bit of a neck bit, and uh, so it's quite a simple shape. I'm always looking for the simple and the easy shapes now, because uh, I'm not the best artist, uh, technical, <laughs> I nearly got it then. It won't stop landing on me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not the best drawer. That's what I was going to say. Some uh, artists are really good at drawing, and uh, some of us aren't. So we've got to try and look for the basic shapes to make it easy for ourselves. <laughs> so that's what I do. Look for the basic shapes. So rectangles, and then longer rectangles for the clothing. And then you can start looking at the more um, complex of it. But once you've got the basic shape there, you're halfway there, aren't you? In fact, you're more than halfway. So I'm using my piece of card with a square cut out <laughs> again. And I use that to uh, just to give me an idea of the composition and where everything is situated in the composition. <laughs> I walked through the woods uh, not that long ago and I've been pulling insects and seeds and all sorts out of my hair. <laughs> I took a really nice photo though while I was in the woods. Really good. The lighting was amazing and I was like mm, that's going to be a painting. It's quite a simple scene, but the lighting I really liked, and I was like, I really want to paint that. So I took a photo. I've got it. I'd like to have been there and just painted it with my canvas and paints, but unfortunately I didn't have them with me. So I'm looking at the trousers and the, the different shapes and the, the washing line angle. I'm trying to... <laughs> I was happy with that. And now I've got the paints. So I'm starting with some yellow ochre. And uh, I forgot to put white on the palette. So I'm legging it. <laughs> so, like I said, I started this painting quite late. And uh, I didn't have that much daylight left. So my plan was to paint this painting and get it finished before the light was gone. And I was feeling confident within myself, so I didn't even worry that I wouldn't get it done in time. <laughs> Got some titanium white. It's just titanium white that I've made. If you're interested in making your own paints, there's a video that I've made on how to make your own oils. So I've got some uh, titanium white there, some yellow ochre. What I'm making is the uh, brick colour, a bit of burnt umber. There's a blob of impasto medium on my palette, which I found dried really fast. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to dry as fast as it did, but I was outside and it must have like a moisture, it must have water in it really. Or whatever it was. Whatever it is, <laughs> dries fast outside, so it's not the best medium ever. Um, so I got grabbing some blue, some brown, 
some yellow and some white and I'm mixing and then holding my brush up to see if I'm about right and then I mix a little bit more just keep mixing <laughs> until you get it right or about right a bit more of the brown a bit more of the blue a bit of yellow ochre So there's not that many colours on the palette. I was thinking there's a red t-shirt, I'm going to need a red. There's green, I need green. There's black, so get some black. <laughs> there's blue, I need blue. And then I was thinking the background, there's brown. So burnt umber is always a good one. You don't need to uh, pile your palette full of different colours. Just use your basic selection. I'm always a bit wary when uh, I see a whole long list of paints that you need to do a painting in an art book. I think, mm, you don't need that many. <laughs> so I don't usually do it. When I used to uh, do painting some art books, these how-to books, you want to follow what they're doing, but when you see a long list of paints and you think, eh, that's a bit too long a list, to my liking anyway. <laughs> We're not made of money, are we? You can't buy every single paint that you need, especially some of the paints are really expensive, like uh, cadmium yellow really expensive like 15 20 quid for a, a proper cadmium yellow tube of paint that is in england anyway it's expensive i think it's 15 quid for a small tube <laughs> i'm probably going to buy some cadmium pigment and make my own so i'm scrubbing away there Scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. So you can see in the reference photo, I took a picture of the scene just in case you wanted to paint it or if I could not get it done in time, I've got some reference for when I do finish it. <laughs> and. Uh, and you can see that the light was really nice on that end t-shirt and on the jeans. It was really lit up nicely. Well, that light go had gone by the time I got to it. <laughs> and as you know, when you're painting outside, the light changes constantly. It's never the same. It's always changing. And uh, that's why Monet one of my uh, art heroes, Claude Monet. That's why he um, painted more than one canvas in one go. <laughs> he had a, a whole line of them. because He was painting all the different lighting effects. I think that whole theory started with Turner painting the same scene over and over in different lighting effects. Locking in. Scrubbing away. It's funny, I was reading this book on uh, four Victorian artists. <laughs> It's quite a good book actually. I can't remember the title. I think it's something like oil oil painting for 
oil painting for I can't remember. <laughs> it's only a simple title, but the uh, it's weird. It's quite an old book, and um, but in that book it was it gave you a list of colours that you should use, and, it, and there was only about seven. And I noticed in a lot of the old art books, the older art books, they recommended Viridian Green as their standard green. Which is interesting. And, uh, Viridian Green is really useful actually, because it's sort of bluish. I find sap green a bit too dull at times. So I'm in, um, speaking of greens, <laughs> I'm mixing a green for the window now. Sort of a green tint to it. Now I put sap green on my palette and uh, later on I go get Viridian green. <laughs> I couldn't mix the green of the t-shirt with sap green because it's too dull. It's just too dull. I needed a bit more power. So you can see I've got cad yellow, sap green, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, cadmium red, yellow ochre and titanium white. And then I've got some medium which is just an impasto medium. So this is just a base colour. All these um, colours that I'm using, when I scrub, it's the base colour. And then I can put the lights and darks on top of it. It's a, um, it's a nice, fun, easy technique, painting, get you started. If you find the canvas a little bit too dry and hard to uh, cover, um, there are mediums that you can put on the canvas that makes it a bit easier like a liquid clear and from the Bob Ross paints that makes it a bit easier to cover um, but I don't want um, my paint my colors to be too whited out so liquid white would be a bit bit of an awkward one to use in this style but there are other mediums liquid and stuff I personally I'm okay with just going for it <laughs> some people might use a, a paint thinner um, or whatever <laughs> I'm just scrubbing it on who needs medium, I say. So if you uh, have a smooth surface, if you gesso your canvas a few times to really smooth it out, you can always sand between um, coats of gesso. You can get a really nice smooth surface and then the paint will go on a lot, be a lot better, a lot easier. And also you could um, use panel, like pieces of wood, gesso that, that also gives you a nice smooth surface. gotta say it is relaxing painting at night <laughs> when we've got these long evenings it's a good time to get out just watch out for the bite flies 
I didn't think there was any. And then uh, when the light started to go, the mosquitoes started to appear. <laughs> So if you're using a, a water mixable paint, you can use a little bit of water to thin your paint and then you, it does spread a little bit easier. That's another possibility. That's quite a good thing about water mixable paints. Um, you can do that and it does make it a bit easier. So now I'm uh, mixing the red for the t-shirt, the first one. So again, you just scrub the paint in first. looking up, looking at these shapes and then looking at the painting blocking it in when you're painting uh, out, out and about and uh, or in the studio and you're painting something you need to look as much as you can because <laughs> I don't know why but there's a tendency to just paint your painting and not actually observe and getting lost in your own painting but you need to observe you need to observe more than you are painting you need to be constantly looking it's a challenge but it's fun make you a better painter by doing stuff like this that's what I'm finding anyway If you think about other painters that got really good, like I know I've mentioned Van Gogh before, <laughs> Vincent. You know, he painted and he painted and he painted. Ten years of painting, that's all he had. Look how good he got. The only way is to do a lot of painting. <laughs> it's the only way to get good at anything though isn't it to do it so I'm grabbing in some medium there some impasto medium mixing with a yellowy reddy colour oh yeah that green on the end is Viridian green <laughs> So what I'm trying to do is get a 
colour that's close enough to the um, the light on the t-shirt. You can see in the folds there is uh, highlights which create the illusion of folds. <laughs> so I'm looking, trying to get the feel of it, trying to get the feel of the folds of the clothes and, and I'm mi mixing my paint quite thickly so I can just lay it on top of the paint that's there. And try and use brush strokes to to say to communicate. So I found I needed a bit of yellow in my white to stop it from going to pale pink. <laughs> I'm trying to be loose with my brush strokes. I don't want it to be uh, too fiddly. I want it to be nice and loose. Just trying to get that feel of the clothing and I'm not trying to paint it like a photo or anything like that. And this is uh, more of a <laughs> A simple statement, I suppose, you would say. The good thing about painting material instead of ceramics or uh, <laughs> or glass or metals you, know, you get to learn how the materials behave under lighting so when you do start making stuff up <laughs> you've got an idea of uh, how the light affects it that's kind of one of the reasons why I've gone on to a bit of a uh, a painting binge <laughs> I want to see how the light plays with everything and uh, I want to do some paintings that are different and fun. So I've got a bit of a darker colour, darker red. And I'm using that to uh, pick stuff out. Actually, some of the areas look a lot looked a lot darker from what I was seeing than they do in the photo um, but that photo was taken when the lighting was a bit stronger I've got really thick paint on my brush now. It's really uh, and 
I'm really going for it. This is a really fun exercise though, if you've got a garden, or if your friend's got a garden, and uh, they have to wash it out, <laughs> then uh, have a go at painting it, because it's a really good experiment to do. Or you could even put some clothes on a chair or something and paint that. I was thinking about doing that. So I try not to get too bogged down with what I'm working on and I uh, move on to the next thing because I know I've not got that much time. <laughs> so I'm trying to make the mix the green of the t-shirt, the, uh, the basic mixture. And I use a bit of yellow, a bit of sap green. And I don't mix it, I can't get it, so I put in the Viridian green and it strengthens the green. I actually think um, the Viridian green that I'm using is a hue and the, the Viridian hue is actually phthalo green. <laughs> and if you know, uh, if you've used phthalo green before, it is a power a powerhouse. <laughs> it's a strong green. So uh you need it is needed though for to get the brightness of that green and I couldn't mix it. Yeah, I thought I had the Viridian Green on the palette at that point, but I didn't. So I left, and I went to get it. Here we go. <laughs> there it is, Viridian Hue, which is actually Thalo Green. <laughs> funny. Hues are funny, aren't they? Go. I thought that's about right. Scrub it on. Blocking in like before, just blocking your colour, scrubbing your colour on. The problem is when you're uh, painting outside, you get all the noises from everybody. <laughs> get the tranquil sounds of a, a wood and you get the noise of people mowing the lawn and <laughs> people having an argument over the barbecue and people doing uh, building work banging stuff about you get all kinds of uh, activity going on So while I've got that green on the brush, I might as well do the other t-shirt. If you notice on the photo it's almost yellow, that other t-shirt, but the sun has gone now. <laughs> the sun is setting. It's 
quite a good time to, to do a painting though when you haven't got the sun blaring on your canvas. I think next time uh, when I go out painting I've found a really nice little spot that I can paint uh, near a tree. Uh, I'm going to take a canvas there. Uh, have a go. Have a go at painting this scene while I'm out there. I'll try and take my camera with me as well and do the video. So I'm just cleaning up around the t-shirt there with some of the uh, background colour. brightening my green up. Was, did you see that? <laughs> Just pulled in a bit more of the uh, Viridian Green and then yellow, Viridian Green and white. A bit of the impasto medium to try and brighten it up for the highlights. Just go in for it, load in the brush, go in for it, see if you can get it down. <laughs> get that shape. Pulling a bit more in, a bit more yellow in it. Try to be a bit bolder. Don't get stuck on detail either. You can't do detail in this situation because if you did, you'd run out of light very quickly. <laughs> Getting that yellow, yellowy green in there, sort of sculpting a little bit, finding the folds. Then back with the dark. So I'm really only using three tones to be honest. The uh, mid-tone, the light and the dark. 
And that's a, a way that I'm simplifying things. There's a little bit of uh, a line there where the um, the ridge of the material, <laughs> the pattern, and there's a bit of light there on the neck of it before the collar. You can see how it's getting darker. <laughs> The, the footage might be a little bit fuzzy, but that's because of the uh, the light going. Um, but I thought I would still show you what I did, give you an idea. It's fun to see uh, how someone does it, because then you can uh, get out there and do your own. <laughs> and go for it. I'm finding at the moment, if I want to get inspired, I'll watch a uh, documentary about an artist, and or I'll, uh, or I'll um, watch uh, Bill Alexander doing his paintings on YouTube, or other artists. Get really inspired, <laughs> and then uh, gets me really up for it, up for doing a painting. So really trying to simplify everything to single strokes because <laughs> I was very aware I'm going to lose the light so I really need to be more <laughs> the word I'm looking for is masterful with my brush strokes but you know we, we can keep practicing It's quite light in that part of the, uh, the tracky bottoms. <laughs> I wear those black tracky bottoms when I do uh, Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Yeah. I enjoy doing uh, martial arts. good training for the brush you see it's just, the brush is just an extension to my my tai chi hands <laughs> so I'm sitting back having a look checking it out I'm mixing a bluey grey, a bluey grey for this next t-shirt. Now it does have some lettering on this t-shirt and uh, I decided I'm not going to bother writing it on because I'm not going to have enough time and I really wanted to get the jeans and the tracky bottoms painted before the light goes completely. <laughs> So I started to think, oh no, I need to get this done quick, otherwise that's it, I'm, 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 I'm going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> you 
mean, it is all part of the excitement when you're outside, though. Um, you have the elements to battle with, insects. Sometimes people get in the way. They want to have a chat to you while you're painting, and you just want to get get going because you're losing light or whatever. I remember seeing this chap painting once. He was, he was oil painting, and he was at the riverside. And I was on on my way to work. I was walking along the road, and I was like, "Oh, someone oil painting!" Now this was before I uh, picked up a brush. Actually, um, I'd considered it a couple of times, and uh, but I never, I never went for it. So anyway, I thought, hmm, I'll walk over and have a look at his picture. And I owned an art thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't, maybe it'll bother him. And then I thought, nah, I'll have a, have a look. And he turned to me and he says, you was going to carry on walking, wasn't you? Well, I don't want you coming over here looking at my picture. Go on, keep going. <laughs> and I, and uh, I recognised him. He was a, a school teacher, well, a supply teacher, because I'd seen him at one of, one of the schools that I was at, and, and I said, you used to be one of my supply teachers. And uh, he just sort of looked at me, funny, like I was mad. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, then I just carried on walking. But I understand where he's coming from now. You don't, I mean, I wouldn't tell anyone to go away kind of thing. Well, <laughs> you don't know, do you, I suppose, unless you actually do it. But it can be hard when people are over your shoulder. If you're, if you're not confident with your painting skill, which, which you know, I don't know... I don't know anyone, to be honest, who's confident in their skill. They always feel like they need to practice more. Even professionals feel a bit like they need to do more. But there are. I'm sure there are people out there that have done so many they don't care if someone look at it. I mean, I'm personally not that fussed anymore. I'll set up and paint or draw and People can stand looking over the shoulder at mine. I'm not really bothered. It's, it's when they do it covertly. I'm like, why are you covertly edging yourself <laughs> towards the back of my piece of paper or the back of my canvas? Why don't you just look? Because you're going to look anyway. There's no point in trying to do it covertly. <laughs> I don't know. People are interesting, aren't they? Strange. People are strange. And I put myself in that bracket. I mean, look at me. I'm sat outside painting my washing. <laughs> so I've got some uh, white and blue. And uh, I'm just throwing in the, the basic shapes that I can see. Just filling it in. So I'm just getting some dark. Just blocking in there. 
You see how that line, this is the thing when you, when you get your dark on your brush, it's amazing how like a few lines and then you sit back and you go, oh that looks better. <laughs> Yeah, when I was out in the woods, checking out all the views, <laughs> yeah, I was amazed at the light. The lighting was so good. Uh, and I thought, hmm, I, I was stood at the bottom of this big tree, this big, big tree. And I thought, hmm, I need to bring my paints here as well. Have a go at this. So on this part, I'm looking at the leg and I'm really trying to get that shape, get the um, the movement of the material because it's a softer, flowier material than the t-shirts and I was trying to get it. Uh, unfortunately bugs were jumping on the paint and then just dropping off <laughs> I feel a bit guilty about that but what can I do poor things <laughs> uh, there's one or two that just blob themselves on and then get oil on their feet and they can't stand so they just drop off I'll put a bit of brown in my white for this this area because it has a bit of a brown tinge in the highlight. That is a uh, that little thing there that I'm just painting is the peg holder. <laughs> and that's the the cord that you can tiny up and keep your pegs hidden happily <laughs> it's funny how we use plastic pegs when we used to use wooden pegs everything a lot of things used to be made of wood and now we use a lot of plastic we need to go back to using more materials like wood and get rid of the plastics because not good for the environment. So I'm just blocking in the jeans. Even like brush handles, they should be made of nice woods. I have to mention that the angle of the photo is slightly off. Um, no, no, it looks actually quite right. Looks about right actually. Not far off anyway. What I plan on doing after this paint is dry, I'm going to go back and do a bit more on it. But this gives you an idea of you know, getting one started. And so the jeans. How do I get the jeans looking like jeans? <laughs> Uh, trying to observe, 
trying to see how it looks and then try and replicate it in paint and when you're time restrained like this one then you've got to represent it in paint as quickly as possible because <laughs> that feeling of panic was starting to uh, come into my mind as I noticed all kinds of things coming alive in the garden So I thought to myself, if I can get it, um, get the basic shapes all in, then when I do my uh, next layer of paint, I can use the photo and just improve things a bit. Like you can cut in the background to create the shape because uh, I notice my uh, the black tracksuit bottoms, the line is too straight compared to the material on the photo so what I would use is that stone colour in the back behind it and I would cut in and I would work on that shape work on the negative shape in between the jeans and the tracksuit bottom so I've got my dark going I have to say though, I did really enjoy painting on a, a canvas this size. I mean, it's, I think it's 18 by 24 size canvas. And uh, usually, um, you think when you paint outside, you really need a small canvas, but I don't think you do actually. I don't think so now. I think bigger canvas, you've got more freedom, more space. Um, you can do your brush, big brush strokes, and and you can. You, it feels good. It feels all, It feels right to me. So I'm gonna get out there. <laughs> I'm gonna go do some more with the bigger canvases. So I'm looking at the pegs for, I need to get some pegs in there. I'll get the peg placement now. <laughs> and I just load my brush with some colour and just put pegs in. I didn't actually, it's the first bit I thought I better do the, the right colour pegs in the right places. But after a few minutes I thought, eh, it's odd, it doesn't really matter. It can be any any colour pegs in there's a uh, metal ring a blue metal uh, ring type thing that holds that bag on the washing line I put that in in those darks I had a mosquito starting to bother me at this point so I was thinking to myself you know what I think it's time to uh, pack up soon the mozzies are, an, are after me. <laughs> I thought I got away with it as well, but I didn't. I got bitten a couple of times. I'm just loading a bit of paint on for some more pegs. I just wanted to get some pegs in there. 
some of them are blue, some of them have got an orange look, some of them are pink. <laughs> I remember thinking at uh, this point, I was like, um, um, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm running out of light. The flies are trying to get me. I think I'm going to have to finish soon. <laughs> so then I, I thought, no. So I just put a peg in each place. <laughs> See, really, you could leave them pegs out until afterwards, until you until you painted the background in properly, and then paint the pegs in. And uh, but it's good. I suppose it's good to uh, know where the pegs are going to be. You can always paint them again. <laughs> That in the light of the pocket there, the inside part. Yeah, I, I like to use my finger to smudge the paint. And then I'm just putting the line, washing line marks in. And I started to fill in that window. I thought, while I'm sat here, I can fill this in. <laughs> So I'm just <laughs> trying to fill these bits in, but really, I should have um, finished. <laughs> it's, look how dark it is. <laughs> uh. 
from still being attacked by a fly. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> there you go, there's the uh, finished sketch. Um, there's more work needed doing for this painting of course. Um, the background needs a bit of work and uh, there's a few um, shapes that need uh, refining but um, it was a good experiment, it was uh, a good good fun painting and if you're wondering what to paint, painting your washing is fun. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching this episode and I'll see you at another one. Cheers, bye.